All right, welcome into another edition of the Newport This Week video podcast series. I'm Bill Bartholomew. As is the case every week, you're listening on NewportThisWeek.com or on the Newport This Week YouTube channel. Uh, we have the Broadway Street Fair coming up. If you're listening to this on Friday the 13th, uh, the day of release, you're certainly going to uh, be looking forward to the Broadway Street Fair tomorrow. And then the following weekend, another great event which is the Heart and Soul Walk, spelled S-O-L-E, and that's a uh, an, an operation, so to speak, of the Potter League. And uh, Kara, I guess if you want to introduce yourself and and tell us about the Heart and Soul Walk, and for those that may not be familiar with the Potter League, give us a quick overview. Good morning. Good morning. Sure. Um, so my name is Kara. Um, I'm the Director of Marketing and Community Relations for the Potter League. I'm going on year eight with the Potter League, which is very exciting. Um, we've seen a lot of changes the last couple of years. Um, so I'll give you a small brief overview of Potter League and then I'll jump into the event if that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So the Potter League has been around, actually we're going into our 95th year, which is crazy to think about. Um, so we've been on the island uh, as the animal uh, facility, uh, Animal Resource Center um, since 1929. Um, and we've definitely have grown over the last handful of years. Um, we've acquired two more locations uh, off island uh, in Warwick, which is our spay and neuter clinic, and then our Pets in Need Veterinary Clinic, which is in East Providence, and it's a full service, low cost clinic. Um, and those we've expanded since 2018, um, every two years we've acquired. So we're due, I think. Um, for, for a new uh, expansion, um, the way we're growing, which is great. Um, so our animal care facility, Middletown, we do adoptions, we have our dog training. Um, we do a lot under that un, under that roof. Um, uh, if you think of it for an animal, we probably do it. Uh, so uh, we do vet care, um, we have a full service vet staff, um, we do adoptions, we try to, we have a community outreach program where we try to, you know, make, provide services through our food pantry or pet safe programs um, to keep families together. Cause that's, you know, that's really our number one priority is not having to break apart a family um, for whatever reason. Uh, and, you know, that's something that that's kind of been a change of mission for us in the last handful of years, as far as, you know, really putting um, a, a big emphasis behind it. Um, but to support all these programs, uh, we obviously have fundraisers and uh, we're actually going into our 34th Heart and Soul Walk. Um, we were just talking the other day, 34 years ago, our first one was on Second Beach and um, it's evolved and changed locations, you know, a handful of times. Um, but the last handful of years, we've um, found a home at Fort Adams and they've been absolutely wonderful to us and with us. Um, so yeah, so Sunday, uh gearing up for our 34th heart and soul walk next sunday sorry october 22nd um starts at 10 30 at the fort um we have tons of activities it's fun for the whole family um i can't even we have some demos we have a, a disc a dog disc demo we have it, our agility cost course set up we actually have the walk itself which goes around the fort it's beautiful uh, we have food trucks, we have tons of activities, contests, um, raffles, and then we have the what we call the fle fleeless vendor market, um, where we have about 35 uh, vendors coming for all different types of stuff um, from, you know, there's pet stuff, there's per people stuff. Um, so we try to, you know, support a lot of local vendors and small businesses. So that's exciting for us because it's, you know, the one time a year where we can kind of get everyone together. Um, and of course, the last part is all the dogs. There's usually we expect between around 300 to 400 dogs. Um, so it's, it's a, I mean, big, tall, small, little, big, everything you can think of in between all the breeds. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, we, we try to make it better every year. And I think this year it's going to be our best one yet. And of course, uh, if anyone's interested in registering, potterleague.org is where you'll find the uh, the information and registration on the events tab. And look, this is your biggest fundraiser and it really is a direct action type of moment. And, you know, th th there's a lot of people who probably, again, use the description of if you can think of an 
area of, of, of need or an area of care or an area of information dissemination, you do it. But I guess let's 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 sort of narrow that even a little bit. So somebody who's interested in participating in the fundraiser, talk about some of the specific um, some of the specific programmatic change that they're going to be a part of if they, in yeah. fact, participate. Sure. Um, so the Heart and Soul Walk fundraiser, all the money raised that goes directly to you know supporting our services and programs. And what that really means is um, just, for example, we had a dog in a local shelter calls us. We just did it this week. We just took some dogs from Providence. They call us. Um, we took three animals, all have medical needs. So what does that mean? One um, has a fractured pelvis. Um, so we're going to, you know, we had to get x-rays, which obviously costs a lot of money, um, and then go into the whole treatment par portion of it. And then we have to find a foster for it. So that all takes, you know, resources. Um, and that's just a small example of just what the what happened the last like two days. Um, so every dollar really goes to supporting, you know, every step of an animal's journey. Um, so be it, you know, spay and neuter or additional medical care, food, um, beds, blankets, anything you can think of. And then obviously our staff has to care for them. So, you know, what that actually means in a day to day, that means cleaning and feeding and walking and, you know, making sure that their needs are met um, from an enrichment standpoint, because we want to make sure that every every animal is being enriched and exercised and mentally stimulated. So, you know, that's is a the the broader picture is is huge. Um, and then we can go into you know the smaller parts of it, which is supporting um, you know pets in the community. So we're doing a vaccine clinic next week. We already have 150 people signed up, and that's low cost, ten dollar vaccines uh, and microchips. Um, there's a veterinary shortage right now that we're nationally, you know, dealing with, um, which means it's harder to get into vet appointments and routine care is huge and important. And from a rabies, you know, vaccine standpoint, it's legally, uh, important. So we're making sure that everyone has access to, you know, at least the bare minimum care. And then we're, we're, we're still taking it a step further. You know, we're making sure there's access to pet food. Um, which has increased in cost uh, pretty substantially the last handful of years. So, you know, every little step in the journey of if it's, you know, a community animal or an animal that's in our care, you know, we're making sure that they're cared for essentially and make and, and have the resources. Um, this year has been tough. We've been stretched, um, you know, and really we're, we're really reaching out to the community for support. Um, so yeah, this is this is very important to us. What's the status right now in terms of availability of folks who are willing to foster or adopt uh, a dog in in the community? Is there is it steady? Has it increased, decreased? Where's that at? Um, <clears throat> there's definitely I would say there's definitely a more uh, an increased length of stay, um, which means they're staying with us a little longer. Um, that's the I would say the average. I mean that doesn't necessarily equate to every single animal that walks through our door. Um, we've joked and said, this is the year of the cat. Um, we've had, a, we've, our cat adoptions almost surpassed double, if not more from the dog adoptions. And we're kind of, we're, we're chalking it up, but equating it to um, housing. Um, it's a, it's no longer a renter's market. It's really a landlord market. And, you know, there's not as much wiggle room with pet friendly rentals um, as far as large dogs. Um, a lot more community uh, complexes or apartment complexes um, are having more, you know, breed and weight restrictions. So that's something we're working on internally, trying to work with some, you know, housing organizations throughout the state, um, because, you know, evidence shows that there really is no difference in the size or the breed or anything like that. So that's something that we're working on as well um, from a, you know, logistical standpoint and trying to you know, provide information to landlords. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely the year of the cat. We've do doubled our cat adoptions uh, more than ever, uh, which is great, um, but definitely slowing down with dogs. So we're always, you know, looking for creative and unique ways to get dogs out in the community. And we've had great support from, you know, local media and, um, you know, community members sharing and getting it out there. Um, so that's been, been you know, uh, 
a journey in and of itself for me from a marketing standpoint. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of slowed down. Our intakes are definitely higher as far as owner surrenders. Um, people are, are struggling with housing um, security. So that's something that we're really trying to help as far as if even it's just temporary housing them until they can get back on their feet or find family members to kind of take them in. So it's an everyday, you know, we're working with people um, that are coming to us for help. So it's been an interesting year from an animal perspective. Um, you know, we do have a couple long stay dogs that we're working on placing our, our uh, bonded pair of Huskies are becoming a little notorious um, amongst our followers, which has been interesting because <laughs> they're definitely a, a co comedic duo. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're, we're turning over every rock put it that way, um, mm -hmm. trying to find every, you know, which way we can find these, these animals homes. Yeah. Well, boy, you, you flag a really, uh, it's, it's just such an interesting and um, important note in terms of the housing crisis and uh, what a tributary in terms of how it impacts your universe. And um, yeah. something that uh, I certainly didn't think of as someone who covers the housing crisis extensively hadn't considered that angle. And boy, that's really, really, um, it's kind of heartbreaking, but it's also good that the Potter League is there to sort of be a backstop in this environment. The Heart and Soul Walk coming up Sunday, October 22nd at Fort Adams. It's a described anyway as a fun-filled dog walk, music, a sponsor and vendor marketplace, food trucks, special activities for dogs and kids, featured entertainment, and a festive atmosphere celebrating the special bond between animals and people. Kara, thanks so much for your time this morning. And again, potterleague.org is where you'll find the registration. Thanks for having me.